Building resilience through improved governance and accountability. My name is Lawrence Haddad. I'm a, uh, a senior research fellow at IFBRI, and I'm delighted to be here. We have a, um, a superb panel for you. I'm very excited uh, to be sharing the stage with them. We've got a mix of experience. We've got uh, different regional perspectives. We've got different levels of governance. We have uh, different sectors represented, different organizations. And we have a really nice blend of policy, practice, research, and advocacy. Um, so if, if yesterday was about, so yesterday was all about uh, different shocks. It was about trying to deal with, if you looked at the titles of yesterday's presentations, about dealing with different shocks. So we had economic shocks, health shocks, uh, natural, natural disaster shocks, conflict shocks. We had all of those. We also had a session on, a couple of sessions on measuring resilience. How do we measure it? If we can't measure it, we can't think about how to predict it better. We can't think about how to design public policy and programs that can help us build resilience. But today, it's all about building resilience. And the four parallel sessions, uh, this, the first four parallel sessions are all about what can we do um, in, around institutions, information, uh, and markets. And our session is on governance and accountability. So our job is to focus on governance. How can it be a force for good in terms of building resilience, and how can we avoid it being a, fo a negative force? Because we know it can also be a negative force. So, I don't know about you, but yesterday I was kind of playing um, buzzword bingo in one of the sessions. I don't know if you've ever played buzzword bingo, but you just list out the buzzwords that come out uh, in a session. And there were a remarkably large number of buzzwords yesterday. And uh, at the end, it was just a, a bit of a blur. So, the risk of this session is that we actually double or, or square that, because not only are we ad adding a not only are we focusing on a, far, a rather slippery concept of resilience, we're adding another slippery concept of governance to the mix. So the potential, for, so you should start your, start your buzzword bingo right now. Um, I'm gonna try to avoid that, and our panelists are gonna try to avoid that by focusing on really specific examples, whenever possible, of what, in, what better governance to build resilience really means. Um, before they do that, um, let, me sh let me share with you just briefly what I, what I think um, resilience, uh, what, what, what my, the way I'm, I navigate my way through the maze of resilience and the way I navigate my way through governance and think how they might be linked up. So let me spend a minute on that. So some of the things that came out yesterday about resilience, some of the features, um, it requires um, sort of rapid, highly dynamic, it's, we're talking about highly dynamic contexts. Uh, we're talking a lot about prevention rather than simply reaction. We're talking about the long term as well as the short term. Uh, we're talking about multi-level, it's not just about individuals, households, communities, it's about local governments, national governments, and inter even international fora. And finally, it's about multiple perspectives. So not just about economics, but about, not just about environment, not just about politics, um, both in the diagnostics, but also in terms of the actions. So those are some of the key features that, for me, resilience resonates with. I'm sure you've all got your own key features. What about governance? Again, for me, governance, um, there are, I, I just finished 10 years at the Institute of Development Studies, and. We had about, we had five different research teams and each of the research teams would say they did work on governance. And they all would do it from a very different perspective. So again, there's no definition of governance that's all embracing and all encompassing. Uh, but my shorthand is around um, capabilities. What's the capabilities? And when we talk about governance, it's not just governments, right? It's about all, all different partners working together. Um, it's about capabilities. Uh, it's about accountabilities, and it's about responsiveness. For me, you'll, you'll have your own. How do those things map into each other? Well, you can think of, cap we've, we've talked a lot about these things, capabilities to help us think about prevention. It's not, we don't, na it doesn't naturally, it doesn't come easier naturally to us to think about prevention. We're much better as human beings thinking about reaction, 
reacting to things. Um, to think, to do multi-perspective diagnostics and action, that requires extraordinary capabilities to do that. We'd much rather just do it ourselves. It's much simpler. Um, it's harder to work in partnerships, even if it's slower, it's more complicated, it's sometimes more conflictual, even if ultimately it's better. Often we don't get to ultimately, we stop it, it's too difficult. In terms of accountabilities, how do you do long-term accountabilities? It's easy to, do, easy to do short-term accountabilities. You do the log frame, you think of a three-year cycle, but how do you do the kinds of long-term accountability that, of the kinds uh, John Hodnot and others were talking about yesterday, over eight, nine, ten years? Really challenging. Uh, how do you do accountability at multi-levels? How do you, how do you I isolate whether it was the national government or the communities or the national government that were actually dropped the ball or, or didn't drop the ball? And in terms of responsiveness, it's really hard to be responsive. And in a highly dynamic world, it's even harder. And finally, it's hard to be responsive at multi-levels. It's hard to coordinate um, responsiveness at multi-levels. We'll hear that from some of the pre presentations today. So that framework is a very simple one. Uh, it's informed by my discussions with some of the panelists. And I hope uh, we'll be able to populate it and you'll be able to populate your own frameworks uh, as we hear from our great panel.